We're now going to take a look at some limits that go to infinity and negative infinity. In order to do that, we need to know a special property, and that's this one right here. So this is the limit as x approaches, it can either approach positive or negative infinity. Your c is some kind of constant, and if you're dividing it by x to a power, now as long as that power is greater than zero, this doesn't have to be integers. It could be x to the one half or five halves, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, but as long as the n is greater than zero, what happens is this is going to go to zero. Now the reason why that happens is because if you try doing numbers in your calculator, 5 divided by 10, 5 divided by 100, 5 divided by 1,000, and so forth, that number itself is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So the larger the bottom is, that means that eventually the whole thing is going to go to zero. Now we're going to use this property in order to answer these two questions here. So in this case I have x is going to be going to infinity, and here's how you're going to be answering these. What you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to divide everything in the top and bottom by the highest power of the bottom. Okay, so you're dividing everything top and bottom by the highest power in the denominator. That's the process for doing these kind of problems. And you're only going to do that if you have it going to infinity or negative infinity is when you're going to do that process. Okay, so for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to take everything top and bottom, divide it by the highest power in the denominator. The highest power in the denominator is going to be x. So I'm going to take everything on the top and bottom and divide it by x. As long as you're doing the same thing top and bottom, that means this is algebraically correct. You are able to, to do that. Essentially what you're doing is you're multiplying the top and bottom by 1 over x in order to do that. But we can just simply divide everything top and bottom by the highest power of the bottom. Now doing so, we're going to be able to get some cancellations here. x is cancel. You get 3 plus 2 over x. And on here you get 1 minus 4 over x. Each of these, we can apply the limit. Because remember, we're technically using limit rules here. We're not writing the steps out. But technically what you're doing is you're applying the limit to each thing top and bottom separately. All these terms top and bottom separately have limits. So the ones that involve a constant over an x, those are going to go to 0. So that means that I have 3 plus 0 over 1 minus 0 that means that my answer is going to be 3. 3 is the limit uh, the answer for this one. So part A, the, the whole entire answer is going to be 3. Now, here's another way that you can think about that. Okay, we did this process. Back when you did pre-calculus, whenever you have x going to infinity, let's think about what that really means. As x gets really big or really small, you're looking at what the y value is doing. What you're doing here is you're actually finding the horizontal asymptote in a way. Now, back in pre-calculus, we had different rules for highest power on top and highest power on the bottom. I don't know if you remember that, but there were the rules for finding out what the horizontal asymptote would be. Now, if we did apply that to this problem, highest power on top is an x, the highest power on the bottom is a 1. When the highest powers match, you're dividing the lead coefficients, so 3 divided by 1 would, in fact, give you 3. So now, you have another way of doing it. As far as calculus is concerned, if you don't remember those rules, then this is a process that you can use, and this is what you should be using actually in this step because now we're applying limits to it. And you want to solve these by using limits, but I just wanted to make a connection to pre-calculus that this is actually what you're doing. When you're doing x going to infinity or negative infinity, you're actually finding horizontal asymptotes. Let's do that for this one down here. Highest power in the bottom is a cube. So this time I have to take everything top and bottom and divide it by the highest power in the bottom. We're dividing by x cubed, top and bottom. And again, once we do that, you're going to simplify it. This first one doesn't simplify. 3 over x cubed. And I have minus 1 of the x's cancel. I get 2 over x squared. In the bottom, x cubed's cancel. And I get 1 over x cubed. Alright, now in this case, what happens is everything that has a constant over x to a higher power, that's all going to go to 0. So in this case, I get 0 for the first one, I get 0 for the second one, and the bottom, I have 3 minus 0. 0 divided by anything is 0, which means that the answer to the whole problem is going to be 0. So I get 0 over 3, that is defined. The only time it's not defined is if I, I have a number on top division by zero, then I can't do that one, but in this case zero on top is okay. So a question might be saying is, well what happens if I get zero divided by zero or something like that? 
Okay, now that's a special type of limit that we're actually going to take a look at, but we're not going to cover it until after we cover derivatives, which is basically going to be our next chapter we're getting into. That we got to use something that's called the Hobbitol's rule, so we're going to learn about that later. So we are going to come back to these type of limits, but the limits we'll do in that section, particularly are ones that end up in zero over zero or infinity over infinity. You won't see that happening in this section. You'll you'll either get something that uh, you get just zero or you might have something with three over zero in that case it would go to infinity.